Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we're going to talk about how to connect with your interviewer. And it's a concept that I'm constantly discussing with my clients. And while you need to be adapting to your interviewer, there are still a few important items that you need to do regardless of your audience. And so in this video, I'm going to cover a couple of different concepts. I want to tackle it from a behavioral question standpoint and an open-ended question standpoint. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Okay, item one, adaptability. Simply put, this video is going to be terrible if you are not adapting and adjusting to your audience. So you really have to start there. Uh, you want to have this kind of strong and positive and friendly intro. Always build that really good intro. Then you want to have great body language and make sure that you're mirroring. You want to be really focused on pitch, tone. You want to be focusing on their VAC. This is just a few items and I'll pin that video up there, the adapting to an interviewer video that I did just so you can get a good sense of what I'm talking about here. But high level, what does this all mean? Hey, if Bob's heads down in his computer and just taking furious notes and he clearly is sticking to his agenda, you are going to tighten and shorten everything. Whereas if Sue is really conversational, you're just going to adapt in a different way. You're going to probably be a little bit more talkative, a little bit more of a questioning approach. Okay, and so how does this show up in the interview? Let's start on the behavioral side of things. And so item two is the situation. So we've all been there. We've started watching a movie. We've started reading a book. We're 15 minutes into the movie. We're 30 pages into the book and we're saying to ourselves, what is going on? And in that moment, we have a choice to stop watching the movie, to stop reading the book. You have a way less time with your interviewer. Think 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute tops. And there are a few simple ways to create connectivity. First things first, I really want you to simplify. Assume that your audience knows nothing. And so if you're using acronyms, you're using very industry specific items, just slow down and say, is it definitely 100% true that my audience would understand everything? So let's go to an example. So let's say I'm interviewing for a technical recruiter role at Facebook focused on Instagram. And the question is, tell me about a goal you achieved. And so a no connectivity answer would be, I had a situation where I set a tough goal for myself to double the amount of candidates I hired in one quarter. Now, Let's focus on a connectivity answer. When I was a technical recruiter at Google, I set a goal in Q4 of 2015 to hire 12 back-end software engineers. I wanted to double what I had done in the previous quarter and double the goal set for me by leadership. So by adding just a few seconds, literally just a few onto your answer, you've uncovered seven additional items for your interviewer, from your role to your company, the quarter, the year, the type of role, what you were actually doubling, so that previous number you had hit, and then what had been set and designated for you by leadership. Lastly, it creates different kind of connectivity because Q4 is a notoriously hard hiring quarter just because of Thanksgiving and Christmas and things really shut down. And lastly, you've created connectivity because you've really focused on what leadership was dictating, not just what you were personally dictating, and knowing that you're doubling up not only what on what you can achieve, but on what leadership has set forward for you. And so now I'm engaged, now I'm connected, now I'm interested, and I want to continue on the journey with you. Whereas in the first part of the example, I don't really want to continue on the journey with you because I'm missing so many details and I'm trying to figure it out as you go along. So item three, actions. The biggest misconception when it comes to interviewing, especially on the behavioral side of things, is that a good storyteller gets the job. No, a good doer gets the job. So storytelling is usually vague and unstructured, while doing is typically structured and gives good connectivity to your interviewer in what you actually did. So let's go back to the same question. Tell me about a goal you achieved. And for the sake of this video, we're just gonna focus on one action. So 
your no connectivity answer, the first action I needed to take was to create a plan. I really spent a lot of time thinking about what I would do and how I would make this goal achievable. Because doubling my goal would be really hard, but I knew it would have a large impact for the company and on my career. Now, you're for your connectivity answer. The first action I needed to take was to create a plan. My plan consisted of four specific items. Reviewing my current pipeline, setting meetings with sourcers, calendaring 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. every day for just sourcing and declining and removing any unnecessary meetings, and fourth, setting up meetings with hiring managers to discuss batch days, specifically setting aside interview days to interview multiple candidates in one day. Obviously, the second answer provides specifics, and I can really visualize the doing, and I understand the connectivity to these are very recruiter-specific, and you might say, hey, Jeff, I'd never give that fluffy first answer, but the reality is a lot of time we're adding in these very storytelling, too much context components to our actions, and I really, really want you to get to the doing because the doing does create connectivity and it's a great segue into item four results okay let's get back to where we started you get to the end of the movie you get to the end of the book and you have questions you're confused it didn't all connect what happened was it me did I miss something it probably not the director or the author probably made some assumptions that you would be able to make connections that you just weren't able to make and in your results, it's important to create a very clear ending to your story. So again, the question, tell me about a goal you achieved. And no connectivity answer would be, and I ended up more than doubling my goal. Now, a connectivity answer would be, the result was I ended up hiring 14 software engineers, including 10 back end, three full stack, and one front end. We achieved this goal in about 10 weeks before the final three weeks in December. Obviously, it was a huge win for a few hiring managers, but probably the most impactful result was leverage. In the following year, I created two internal trainings based off the results of exceeding my goal. The first was a connectivity training for sourcers and recruiters to create and foster better relationships. Second was a training on how to implement a successful batch day. So I know that first answer was pretty weak. But this is honestly how many of my clients approach the results the first time we work together. It's not even well thought out. It's almost rambled. It's not really, really solid at the end. And I need you to build that solid connectivity. The question really ultimately is about results and the results you were able to achieve. And it's a great segue into item five, which is learnings. And I don't want to go into too much detail on this item, but I also don't want you to lose the significance of this piece. The top companies in the world want continual learners. So I want you to always be thinking about implementing a couple of high level learnings. And then if you can bring the learnings back into the leverage component, that's going to make it even better for your connectivity and then getting your interviewer connected. So now, Let's transition and let's talk about open-ended questions. And so item six is about having a plan. And this is a really far way to go back. And I want to go all the way back to the start because for open-ended questions, if you don't go back to basics and come in with a plan, you are going to lose connectivity with your interviewer quickly. And the reason being is that typically when you don't have organization and structure, you are going to get wieldy, you are going to go on rambling incoherently, you're going to get very repetitive, and if that happens, your interviewer is just going to be bored, lost, and not connected. So these high-level frameworks and having that plan will build an instant connectivity before you even get in the door. Item seven, questions. Without diving too much into the weeds on this one, because you know I can spend hours on this topic, Let's just focus high level on a few areas where questions are really, really going to help you. So first, clarifying questions. How this builds connectivity is it opens up your brain to your interviewer. And these initial questions may tap into something that intrigues them. This is part of the adapting. You have no idea what gets them excited, what gets them engaged. But by not taking any exploration, you are guaranteeing that that connectivity is one-sided. So exploring the question helps uncover connectivity. 
Second is the options question. So you're starting to build this connection. Are you presenting a high level framework? What I mean by that is as you present these high level concepts, are you going back to your interviewer and saying, hey, Sue, do you want me to focus more on resources, more on risk? Because if you stop, Sue might just say, yeah, let's focus on risk. Now you have connected to something that Sue's interested in, where she might not have been that interested in stakeholders or in the historical data in this particular question. Third, the solution question. When you move to the solution, you need to figure out if your interviewer actually cares about it. So let's flip that previous question from tell me about a time you achieved your goals to how do you achieve your goals. After exploring this question, maybe they do, maybe they don't want a solution and have you come up with a solution plan. They may have a pretty tight agenda and they saw a good exploration and they want to move on. Sometimes they want a solution. Just ask. If you're asking about a solution and whether they really want you to problem solve and create that plan, again, it's just great connectivity. I can tell you, myself as an interviewer, I'm typically more interested in the exploration than the solution. Item eight, position specific. So when you get to this solution phase, you are gonna create greater connectivity if you're incorporating position specific details. So let's get back to the goals question, for example, and let's get back to the role that we were going for. So the technical recruiter at Facebook focused on Instagram hiring. I'm going to set my goals according to the hiring objectives set down by leadership. I'm going to focus on building relationships with hiring managers, internal partners, stakeholders, and I'm probably gonna utilize internal and external resources to notice trends, what's happening in the social media recruiting space. And you can even niche down further for Instagram, but as you're getting to that solution, you don't want to set this very high level goals component. You want to niche down into a recruiter role and then more specifically an Instagram recruiter role. Overall, I just want to say connectivity is so important. If your interviewer is connected, they're going to be actively listening and it's just going to yield better results for you. And the big thing is practice. Just make sure you're practicing because the people you practice with will be able to tell you whether you were creating great connectivity or not. I really hope this helps. Good luck. Thanks.